Um, Let us um, look at the more geotechnical aspects uh, from this lecture onwards. We in this lecture uh, we are going to look at uh, how to generate uh, the in situ pressures and then uh, simulate uh, the construction and then execution. Uh, this is very typical of geotechnical engineering. We are not going to construct the entire structure at, in one go. We are going to do stage by stage and then uh, let us see how we can do them. And uh, see in uh, geotechnical engineering before we perform any analysis it is very important that we first initiate uh, the initial stresses in the soil. Uh, that is because uh, our strength and the stiffness is very much a function of the of the uh, stress state uh, that the soil is subjected to and uh, most of the geological uh, materials like soil and rock they are dependent on the on the confining pressure uh, for them to develop uh, strength and also the stiffness and that uh, you would have seen uh, from our um, triaxial compression test so if we do at a low confining pressure you will get some strength and then some modulus and if you do it at a higher pressure you get a much higher strength and also much uh, stiffer response okay. and uh, so that um, um, we are going to simulate by initial, initializing um, the in situ stresses and how do we do that see the vertical stress is not a problem because uh, we have a good idea of the unit weight of the soil and then uh, gamma times z will be your vertical stress and that multiplied by some uh, lateral pressure constant k will be your lateral pressure and that uh, pressure constant k we can get from our uh, uh, either the pressure meter test or uh, the flat head dilutometer test and so on okay. and uh, then once we have this uh, we can um, initiate initialize the in situ pressures and uh, these uh, lateral pressures they could be very high in the case of over consolidated clays um, like uh, for example um, London clays are known to have a K naught of about 3 and uh, within Chennai itself uh, there are some areas with a very high uh, uh, highly over consolidated clays they could have very high K or if you have a soil in the hilly stratum or uh, in a deep valley they will be subjected to lot of uh, lateral squeezing in that case also we can have very high lateral pressures and uh, whatever construction that we are doing say whether you are uh, especially if you are doing the execution, if you are excavating the soil in a highly over consolidated clays, um, the locked in pressures are released and uh, the more pressure that the soil was subjected in the geological past as you are um, excavating the soil is going to release that much pressure. So, that will result in larger deformations and the larger forces on our uh, support structures. So, let us see in this figure I uh, have uh, uh, the response of soil at different confining pressures and the x axis we have the axial strain, y axis and the deviator stress at 345, 690, 1035 and 1725 kPa confining pressures. And you see um, as the confining pressure is increasing your strength of the soil is increasing and then more importantly the slope is also increasing. So, the slope increasing means the soil is becoming stiffer okay. and uh, so the stiffness is going to control our uh, deformations whereas the strength is going to control our bearing capacity or um, the failure and the so on okay. and even the volume change response is going to depend on the confining pressure. So, at low confining pressure we could have um, a large volume expansion that we call as the dilation and at very high confining pressure uh, the soil might be subjected to more uh, volumetric compressions okay. uh, these are um, some illustrative results. So, it is um, very much uh, necessary that uh, we sub we initialize uh, the in situ pressures correctly and the vertical pressure is uh, just simply gamma z 
and then the lateral pressure um, is k naught times sigma z. So, let us say uh, z is the vertical axis and um, sigma z is uh, gamma z and let x and y be the uh, be the axis in the horizontal plane and uh, we have the sigma x x and sigma y y and they are equal to k naught times sigma z and uh, k naught is the at the pressure coefficient at rest and um, uh, we can assign all these uh, above stress uh, stresses at each of the, um, each integration point. So, within a mesh we know exactly where each integration point is located we can calculate x, y and z uh, positions and then we can calculate the depth of soil above that particular integration point and then estimate sigma x sigma y and sigma z and assign uh, these um, normal pressures to the in situ uh, stress states and we assume that uh, the starting uh, uh, shear stresses are 0 in the soil. Okay. And uh, but then if you have stress without applied uh, force then you cannot establish the equilibrium and what we do is uh, uh, we need to uh, calculate what should be the external forces that will cause this much um, stress. So, that we do by uh, doing the integral B transpose sigma dV calculation. So, whatever stress that we have uh, applied on the system we calculate the equivalent force and apply uh, this much force on the system. So, that uh, there is a good equilibrium between the applied force and then the reaction force. And um, this uh, method of directly specifying the, uh, the in situ pressures works only when you have a horizontal uh, level ground because your gamma is 0 or the gamma x y is 0 or sorry the tau x y is 0. But if you have an inclined ground there will be some uh, shear deformations. So, in addition to your sigma x, sigma y, sigma z there could be some shear stresses and because of the shear stresses your normal stress magnitude also may change and in that case what we do is uh, uh, we perform an initial uh, uh, fine entitlement analysis with some uh, Poisson's ratio corresponding to our k naught and for that we require a relation between the k naught and then the Poisson's ratio and we can go back to our uh, original Hooke's relations to establish uh, uh, the relation between the k naught and the Poisson's ratio mu. So, if you look at the three normal strains epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z in terms of the normal stresses sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z and then the Poisson's ratio and here uh, by definition the at rest at the pressure condition is when your lateral um, strains are 0 epsilon x x and epsilon y y are 0 and we can um, set epsilon x x to 0 that will give you sigma x x as mu times sigma y y plus sigma z z and epsilon y y is 0 that will give you sigma y y is a mu times sigma x x plus sigma z z and uh, we can find a relation by for the lateral pressures in terms of the vertical stresses because between these three stress components the vertical stress is easy to compute. Sigma z is just simply gamma z and uh, by solving uh, these two equations we can get an equation for sigma x x and sigma y y as uh, mu by 1 minus mu times sigma z z and it is in the form of uh, this k naught times gamma z. So, this mu by 1 minus mu is taken as k naught. The k naught is the lateral earth pressure coefficient at rest when your lateral strains are 0 and the sigma z is gamma z and the k naught is a mu by 1 minus mu or in the reverse way we can write a mu as k naught by 1 plus k naught. Let us say k naught is the desired value that you want to impose on the soil. In turn we can calculate uh, the Poisson's ratio for doing our uh, dummy analysis. 
So, our if K naught is 2, our Poisson's ratio is 2 thirds that is 0.667 and we know that the upper bound on the Poisson's ratio is 0.5. So, it is greater than 0.5 which is not allowed and the K naught of 3 says that your Poisson's ratio is 0 0.75 and, um, and once again um, this is more than 0 0.5 and our K naught of 1 will give us a problem because K naught of 1 means uh, the Poisson's ratio is K naught by 1 plus K naught that is 0 0.5. But then if you use 0 0.5 your uh, constitutive matrix will blow up because you have 1 minus 2 mu in the equations for plane strain axisymmetric and 3 dimensional. So, 1 minus 2 mu becomes 0 in the denominator. So, it will just simply blow up and to prevent any numerical uh, problems what we do is instead of using 0 0.5 we will round it off to some 0 0.49 or 0 0.499. And uh, so, what we do is uh, we perform a dummy analysis with this Poisson's ratio of uh, 0 0.67 or 0 0.75 and then initiate our in situ pressures and then later we set all these displacements to 0 because uh, we are not really interested in these displacements or the soil strains because this is a state where uh, uh, you have it before you actually construct, before you construct your foundation or uh, your embankment and uh, we are not really interested. And then after uh, you perform the initial uh, init uh, in situ pressure analysis, we reset the Poisson's ratio back to the, um, to the original value. And only after uh, the in situ pressures are initiated, we can do the rest of the construction like either um, constructing a foundation, constructing a retaining wall or embankment or anything. And even for the execution problems, K naught is very, very important because if you have very high K naught as you are releasing the soil, uh, um, the, so, the soil by excavation that much loads are being released. And this K naught of uh, very high value uh, happens in the case of over consolidated clays or uh, because of some geological conditions like a deep valley or seismic. Uh, uh, conditions and so on. Okay. And um, the deformations when we are making uh, deep excavations are very much dependent on the K naught. So, for uh, doing uh, uh, this initial stress analysis, we perform uh, the analysis with some pseudo Poisson's ratio mu bar as K naught by 1 plus K naught and then we apply standard uh, geotechnical boundary conditions that is uh, the two vertical sides are supported on and rollers smooth rollers and then the horizontal uh, boundary at the bottom it is um, uh, constrained from moving in both x and y directions to represent uh, the uh, rough rigid the boundary at the bottom. These boundary conditions are called as a standard geotechnical boundary conditions and after we initiate uh, the self weight with the desired K naught, we set all the strains and deformations to 0 and um, because we are not really interested in knowing what happened before we start com our construction. We are more interested in knowing what happens because of our construction like let us say you have construct a foundation whether it will settle by 10 millimeters or 50 millimeters is our concern. Whether the soil has undergone some 1 meter settlement in the geological past that is not our concern. So, here uh, you have a typical result uh, with the K naught of 0 0.6 and uh, uh, the yellow is the original uh, mesh and then the black line is the deformed mesh and uh, the soil is um, deforming down with the K naught of 0 0.6 and, um, and then uh, these are the, um, the stress vectors. You see K naught is 0 0.6 means uh, the sigma z should be more than the sigma x and the sigma z 
is um, you see a longer vector because these are all scaled uh, vectors compared to the uh, horizontal uh, vector which, which is shorter uh, because it is only um, sigma x is only 0 0.6 times sigma z. Okay. And um, let us uh, if you do with the k naught of 2.5 very very high um, initial um, pressure state uh, the entire soil is heaved up. Uh, the yellow line is the original mesh and the black line is the deformed mesh and you see here the vectors they are all showing uh, the soil is uh, heaving up and uh, you see the stress vectors the horizontal line is very long compared to the vertical line. So, that means that the lateral pressure is um, high and um, so the staged construction is um, a very important in our geotechnical engineering. Let us say you are dealing with a soft clay and um, uh, we may not be able to construct our entire height of the embankment in one go because we have to go layer by layer and in a small and um, small heights and with some gap so that uh, the foundation soil can uh, gain some strength uh, because as the soil is consolidating uh, the soil will dissipate some pore pressure and it will undergo some compression so its strength will increase and uh, so that is unique to a uh, geotechnical engineering and here um, I have just shown an illustration see here we have a foundation soil and we are going to construct uh, the embankment in stages say let us say layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 and so on like uh, we just go on placing the, uh, the soil until our full height is achieved and um, now uh, we can um, actually use our finite element programs um, to not only see what happens when you have an incremental construction like this but we can also examine how much time we should wait for the soil to consolidate under layer 1 so that before you place the soil in the layer 2 because if the soil is consolidated um, then uh, that means that the soil has gained some strength and so when you place uh, the next layer of soil uh, the um, it will uh, give a slightly better response a stiffer response and so on. So, what exactly we mean by construction is we place new elements in the mesh and um, because of that uh, the size of the mesh is going to increase because of the addition of uh, new elements and uh, uh, the self weight of these elements is added uh, to the load vector as n transpose b integrated of the volume of the elements. So, for all the newly placed elements we calculate this additional uh, load that is coming from them and then add them to the right hand side the force vector and uh, we also calculate its stiffness and assemble it for the uh, into the global stiffness matrix and uh, so actually it is uh, actually a lot of bookkeeping. So, the program should keep track of um, what are all the new elements that are placed in the mesh and it should um, uh, calculate its stiffness matrix and then the load vector and then add them to the uh, to the already existing um, uh, stiffness matrix and then the load vector um, to simulate um, the construction okay. And um, so, the simulation of construction is basically n transpose b this is what we have seen in the in one of the classes earlier and uh, the simulation of execution is the opposite. See, let us say uh, we are excavating a soil within this uh, within this region. We are going to remove uh, these elements and then these nodes corresponding to these elements that are removed. And how we simulate uh, execution is um, very simple. So, after you remove these the soil elements, when the next time when you form the stiffness matrix you are not going to consider uh, these uh, elements that are removed and then uh, these um, surfaces they have become uh, 
uh, stress free surface or traction free surfaces because they are uh, they are free surfaces. So, how do we make them traction free and for that we need a procedure and the same thing with the deep excavation. Let us say we are um, excavating some soil and this vertical and um, lateral surf the horizontal surface they become uh, stress free or traction free after the excavation. And um, what uh, we do is we reformulate our equilibrium equations like this k times incremental displacement is equal to external load P minus integral B transpose sigma dV. So, actually our reaction force is uh, calculated as integral B transpose sigma and by putting that into the right hand side load vector, we can automatically take care of the load that needs to be removed because of excavation. And if you see this uh, subscript I minus 1, this refers to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, previous uh, step when these elements were uh, were active. And um, so, this uh, uh, the P external is the applied load uh, that will include even the uh, the contribution from the uh, the elements uh, that were not excavated in the previous step and now we are removing them because we are putting minus of B transpose sigma I minus 1. I minus 1 refers to the previous um, step and uh, so when we go to the formulation of the stiffness matrix in the ith step, we are not going to consider the elements uh, um, that are removed. Uh, but then we consider their contribution in the previous step on the right hand side. Okay. So, in this way uh, we can, um, we can um, uh, simulate the execution and also the, uh, the release of stresses. So, here uh, let us say this is your foundation and uh, we are going to place a sheet pile wall uh, before we construct and uh, actually currently it is um, uh, what we do is uh, we call it as a wished in place, we just simply place the sheet pile wall to the desired depth, we are not going to, to, uh, to uh, drive it into the ground, into the soil because we are not really interested in knowing what happens during the driving. Okay. And then after um, you place the sheet pile wall to the desired depth, we start removing the soil and uh, these, soil, these um, um, soil elements are removed. So, uh, this surface, this horizontal surface and this vertical surface, they become uh, traction free and uh, if you want, you can provide uh, some struts so that uh, uh, the lateral deformations are um, within uh, some limits okay. and then we can go on excavating up to the desired depth. And uh, you see here as you are excavating the soil is going to heave up. See here um, these upward arrows, they are showing uh, that the soil is heaving up okay. and uh, uh, so this execution is a very, very common thing with all the metro constructions, they are having either uh, deep execution or uh, tunnels, especially if you are inside a city, uh, these execuations are very, very dangerous because uh, most of the areas are built up with uh, pre-existing buildings and your construction activities should not impair uh, their stability. So, it is very important that we perform um, detailed finite element analysis and see what is the effect of our execution on the foundation of a neighboring building or a neighboring structure and then uh, take some precautions. So, here I will show you one more example of uh, execution simulation and this particular one refers to uh, subsidence at Singerani coal mines because of uh, mining activities and uh, this mining activity is called as a, as a uh, um, like it is a, it is a pillar type sorry it is a, it is a long wall mining. Uh, there is a machine that cuts the, uh, the coal to a very long length and uh, this uh, the coal seam is of uh, is of approximately 3 meters height and uh, the once the 
uh, the coal is removed from one panel, uh, we give some gap and uh, typically uh, this gap is about 30 meters and then uh, we do one more uh, round of mining at the other end and this uh, um, area of um, the soil or uh, coal that is left behind, it is called as a pillar because it is like a pillar, it is supporting the, uh, the superstructure or the soil above and uh, so this typical overburden depth is 100 meters, thickness of the coal seam is um, 3 meters and the spacing between these uh, long wall coal mines is um, 30 meters. And um, because of this, um, this coal mining at 100 meters depth, the ground at the top is um, undergoing some subsidence. Uh, that is mainly because uh, this entire uh, ground is uh, consisting of number of joint planes, both horizontal and vertical joint planes. So, whatever you are doing at a great depth of 100 meters, it is reflected back onto the surface. And uh, so, when you remove the soil, what happens to the tunnel roof? It will collapse and uh, sometimes uh, its deformation may be more than the thickness of the coal seam and uh, to prevent these nodes from uh, deforming more than um, the thickness of the coal seam, what is done is uh, uh, a deformation equal to the thickness of the coal seam was given to all these nodes um, like this. Uh, the uh, this is the, the node at the other end uh, connected to the rest of the soil mass and um, we give a deformation equal to the thickness of the coal seam and then see what happens in the rest of the soil. And uh, the mesh itself is a very complicated mesh because there are number of uh, horizontal joints and then the vertical joints. All these joints are simulated by using uh, a six node joint elements and then the continuum uh, was simulated by using eight node quadrilaterals, um, square, rectangles and so on like here um, is only a schematic sketch and uh, these are all the properties of the soil and then the coal mine uh, the, in, the, in the seam, okay. the Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, unit weight, cohesion, friction angle and so on. And, um, See these long wall panels of 1 meet, 150 meters wide, they are separated by a pillar of 30 meters width and uh, the entire problem was analyzed by using a plane strain analysis and uh, this medium is discontinuous with vertical joints at every uh, 20 meter horizontal spacing and then um, uh, uh, this vertical spacing uh, along the vertical direction also there are number of joints and the entire analysis was done by using a plane strain model and um, more coulomb um, relation was used for um, simulating the strength of this soil and uh, the in situ uh, stress state um, uh, was 0 0.6 as reported by Naik and Rao uh, corresponding to the site and uh, the number of node points in the mesh is 7400 and uh, the number of 8 node elements is 1484 and the number of joint elements is 1252 and the analysis was performed in 2000 load steps with 75 iterations per load step. Actually, it's action, it is not an easy thing to perform these analysis because um, we like to have a good balance between the applied load and then the reaction load. But in this type of nonlinear problems, uh, it is uh, difficult to enforce that equilibrium and uh, this happens with very, very large number of iterations. So, at each uh, step, each load step corresponds to some displacement, uh, about 75 uh, times the solution was rep uh, repeated until, uh, until the equilibrium is uh, maintained and the approximate CP time is about uh, 24 hours. It took a long time, some analysis uh, they took more than one week because of the complicated geometry and uh, this is a typical uh, mesh and um, 
this plus sign is the observed uh, ground subsidence at this, um, this site in uh, Sengareni coal mines and then uh, this uh, uh, the line with the, with the round is the predicted one is actually uh, this is the second uh, excavation, this is the first ex excavation because it is actually done in series with some time gap and uh, um, only the peak um, settlement is not predicted properly, but otherwise uh, the prediction between the finite element analysis and then the measured displacements is not bad. And one more prediction is done for uh, coal mine in, um, in the USA, uh, this is um, North Appalachian um, coal mines in Virginia and once again um, it is a plain strain problem long wall uh, mining and um, uh, the constitutive model um, was uh, Drucker Prager and the pro this analysis was done by somebody else by Sue in 1991 and um, this is the mesh and uh, this mesh was even bigger because the area of the soil is much, much larger and the CPE time is about uh, 26 hours and these are the properties and uh, there is a good match between um, the predicted displacements and then the observed displacements because um, uh, these soil properties are, um, um, are directly obtained uh, from their laboratory and the site here it is a bit more complicated because there are number of um, soil layers as given here um, at different depths. And uh, for the Singareni coal mine um, some parametric analysis were done for um, uh, studying the effect of um, K naught on the subsidence. So, when the K naught uh, was um, 0.43 uh, the subsidence was very high and when the K naught is um, 1 uh, the subsidence is lower and then when the K naught is very high uh, the subsidence is even lower because actually here in this particular case because the coal seam is removed and, uh, and then the rest of the soil mass is at a very high pressure. So, if it is at a very high pressure it may not uh, move because it is already under, uh, under a very tight uh, squeezing position and uh, uh, this particular one is done with uh, K naught of 0.6 and uh, with the different um, uh, uh, the panel widths and the panel width uh, as it is increasing it becomes more and more critical uh, with the more settlements that is what we see here with the panel width of 0.8 uh, the settlement is less than um, half a meter and with a panel width of 1.2 it is more, but then when the panel width is about 1.4 and the settlement is very high. And we can actually process the stress contours inside the, the soil and then see what happens. See these stress contours with a negative sign minus 100 means it is a compressive stress and um, if it is positive that means that the soil is failing because it is a tensile stress and uh, uh, when the W by H is 0.8 that is a non-critical case or a subcritical case of um, excavation width. Uh, the most of the tensile stresses happened only around the, around the tunnel and away from the uh, tunnel um, there are more mostly negative um, stresses, compressive stresses and because of that your uh, settlement is smaller. But then uh, when you have a uh, w by h of 1.4 that is a critical um, width when you are um, failure reaches all the way to the top and that is what we see here. Um, the tensile stresses have propagated almost up to the, the ground surface, okay, this is 200 um, tensile stress and uh, so here cl closer to the tunnel it is about 400 and then at some other place um, there is a compression okay. and these um, uh, contours were plotted uh, separately. What we do is uh, um, after we run the 
finite element program, there is an option to save uh, the, uh, the shear strains or um, shear stresses in the x, y, z format, x, y is the or the coordinates and the z is the contour value and this is given as an input uh, to another program that can draw the, the contours and then um, that program has uh, produced these contours. But if you use uh, um, the commercial finite element programs like Abacus or, uh, or Plaxis, they have good options for uh, drawing the contours. You do not need to do this type of importing uh, to other pr um, programs. And uh, this is uh, um, the one with uh, two parallel mines, uh, parallel mining and what happens uh, to, the, to the stress contours. And uh, once again uh, with, uh, um, with a very large width for the, uh, for the coal, coal seam that uh, the effect uh, propagates up to the top. W by H of 1.6 and uh, this same thing was applied even for um, deciding on the, on the mine slopes for another deep execution. This is uh, for a Nivelli Lignite Corporation. Uh, they have open cast mines where they uh, dig the top soil to get access to the, uh, to the uh, lignite. Lignite is um, another form of the coal. And uh, here uh, the lignite is happening at about 60 to 150 meters depth and the entire um, um, area is an open cast mine and um, the mine authorities, they wanted how best to excavate so that uh, they can have a very steep slope and uh, as um, small a bench width as possible because if they have a larger bench width, that much area they are losing for the, uh, for the lignite mining and uh, they asked us um, uh, to recommend some um, uh, slope angles and then the bench width and other things and uh, the entire analysis was done by, by finite element programs and before that uh, the analysis was done uh, through the, sl this, uh, the slip circle analysis also for just to get some idea. And uh, uh, the question is what should be the bench height and what should be the bench slope and then the bench width. So actually they want maximum height and a very steep angle and as low a bench width as possible uh, within um, some constraints that it cannot be too small because uh, their um, construction vehicles have to, to move. So for that uh, they need at least 10 meters and um, then uh, how how many benches can we have? The lesser number is better because uh, that much um, area they can um, excavate for, um, for extracting the lignite. And uh, this particular result is from uh, Plaxis program. And uh, the same uh, analysis were also done by using the GFM program by using three node triangles arranged with four per rectangle like this and uh, very similar results were, were obtained between the GFM and uh, the Plaxis program. And these results are um, uh, from the GFM program uh, for different bench heights and the slope angle and what are the factors of safety obtained. And they wanted a minimum factor of safety of 1.5 and uh, so we can have uh, 1.5, we can get uh, with a bench height of 15 meters and a bench slope of 60 degrees, uh, it was able to give uh, the slope stability program was uh, giving a slightly smaller value compared to finite element analysis and um, for different bench heights and bench widths and so on. Okay. And um, so whenever you have a deep excavation, this particular one is, um, is at uh, some other site, Mangno, Mangalore refineries, MRPL where um, uh, the deep excavation was supported by soil nailing. This also we can simulate uh, through finite element program and we can, um, we can design the slopes. Okay. So I think that is uh, that's the end of my presentation. So here in uh, this lecture we have seen 
how to initiate the in situ pressures and then uh, simulate uh, construction, gradual construction and then excavation. And uh, these are very typical of finite element analysis and most of the, the geotechnical related uh, programs, they allow you to do this. And uh, also this uh, B transpose sigma is very important quantity that we can use for uh, checking our uh, equilibrium and also for, uh, uh, for doing the execution problems. And um, the execution problem is easy to do in uh, our geotechnical uh, programs, but if you use uh, programs like ANSYS or NISA, they do not give you the option for removing the elements or even if you remove, they cannot uh, release the stresses. So, um, we cannot use them, but Abacus has the ability to, uh, to release the stresses. Uh, but it is a bit uh, complicated process, whereas in um, Plaxis and the GeoFM, it is very simple because it is uh, they are already programmed for that. Okay. So, thank you very much. We will meet next time. Okay. And if you have any questions, please uh, send an email to this address, profkrg at gmail.com. So, thank you very much. Bye.